Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our COVID-19 update in Eau Claire County. We really appreciate people joining us. It's Monday, August 10th. And um, we will give the usual update today of things happening in the community as well as our local data and state data. I hope that people found some time over the weekend to um, get together, have safer connections with friends and family and do some things that were enjoyable. I'm really proud of what this community is doing to find ways to support one another and keep each other safe. Um, I want to use an example today. I, I'm really fortunate to work with a Hmong colleague who made this beautiful mask for me. Um, she shared with me, I learned from her that the pattern on this mask, the elephant track pattern, is something that's a specific symbol representing the Hmong people. And I didn't know that. Um, it's good to learn from each other. It's good to listen to each other. And it's really wonderful how people are caring for one another. Um, so thank you, May, for helping me continue to learn. Um, we also need to remember that COVID-19 is impacting people across the state and across the nation. Um, those people that um, are non-white, people with brown and black skin, in different ways. And we need to be reaching out in ways to connect with one another. So I really encourage everybody to continue to do that. Today, Luke Feedy is here to share with us a mental health update, and I will go through the usual uh, data. So the data right now for the state. We have now negative counts for testing of 1,100,402. 1, 1, so again, 1,000,000. 1,402 negative tests. That's an increase of 7,600 since Sunday. A total positive counts of cases of 61,061, an increase of 507 since yesterday. Of those positive um, cases of COVID-19, 5,031 have been hospitalized at any point, an increase of 31 individuals that have been hospitalized. Total deaths are at 998, no increase since yesterday. Over the past two weeks, the state average has been about 830 new cases a day, and the positivity rate over the past seven days is 6%, about the same in a consistent way um, over the last number of days. In Eau Claire, we now have 15,225 negative tests for COVID-19. Positive tests were at 590, an increase of 27 since Friday. Four people have died of COVID-related uh, deaths in Eau Claire, Eau Claire County residents, and 30 people have been hospitalized that are Eau Claire County residents. The recovered number of individuals from COVID-19 for Eau Claire County is at 487. Um, that means we have more than 100 cases of active COVID-19 and all of their contacts that are being isolated and quarantined at this point in time. Every Monday, we also share with you some jail-related data. Um, today, we are sharing that there have been 50 individuals that are connected to the Eau Claire County Jail that have been tested for COVID-19 that we are aware of. Seven positive cases, that same number that we've had for the last couple of weeks, and seven recovered individuals. We also wanted to share with you that we've been working with the Eau Claire County Jail and the Wisconsin National Guard to set up a testing event at the jail that will be happening tomorrow. That testing event will be for baseline testing of both the staff and people that are incarcerated in the jail in order to get a good understanding of where we are at now with that community um, and to confirm that the practices and policies that the jail has worked hard to have in place are continuing to um, make sure that they are protecting the populations that are there. This is not a testing event because of an outbreak. This is not a testing event because of a concern in the jail. Those are things that have happened in other communities, but we really decided and have been supported by the state because we have a large jail to take a pause and look at what our testing looks like in this community for that population and get some perspective about what is going on in the jail. 
This is an optional testing event for both staff and those people that are currently incarcerated in the jail. People do not have to be tested, but we're encouraging both staff and those incarcerated to be tested. It will give us a very solid baseline if we have a good percentage of those populations tested, a good understanding of where we're at now, and potentially some things we may need to do in the future. It is a free test for all involved and convenient, so we are really encouraging people to engage. Um, I do want to take a quick pause now to see if there's any questions about that. We have um, a couple of leadership people from the jail with us, um, and they have to go to the site visit for the National Guard um, that's happening at 4 o'clock today, so I just want to make sure that we don't miss any of those questions. Otherwise, I will address them at the end. Yeah. Sure, the question is related to what has changed that we think now testing in the jail is good. We have for a long period of time said congregate care setting testing is important, whether it's the nursing home or assisted living facilities or the jail or other settings where a large group of vulnerable people are living together. Testing is a good thing. Um, we also know that like the nursing homes, um, the jail has been doing a really um, strong job in making sure that they have policies and practices in place to protect um, new people coming into the jail, making sure that they are quarantined before they are moved into the general housing, and making sure that staff are using the appropriate PPE. We know in most congregate settings um, where there is not um, the residents going in and out, that it's usually the staff that unfortunately bring things in and out, whether it's a long-term care facility or another kind of facility. So the use of protective PPE in the jail setting is critically important, and the jail has been doing a yeoman's job making sure that that happens. Um, this is an opportunity, with the National Guard still available to us, to get a baseline. We don't want this to be about a, a challenge happening and having to come in after many cases occur or an outbreak occurs. We want to do it as a baseline so that we are comfortable with where things are at with that population, and from there we can make decisions moving forward. Not dissimilar to what has happened with nursing homes and assisted livings that have all done a baseline and other congregate settings across the state. So newly identified in the state plan was congregate setting baseline testing, and we've decided to do that with the jail. Yeah. Yeah, the question is, will there be sufficient testing, um, t testing supplies available for all inmates and all jail staff? And yes, the National Guard is prepared to test everybody in the jail, um, including all staff and connected um, personnel, as well as any inmate. Um, we are hoping that we have really um, a very full number of people that get tests so that we have a good idea of what's happening there. Good. Um, I will share a couple of additional announcements and then I'll have Luke Feedy come up. So one uh, final update for everybody is that reminder that um, tomorrow is election day. So if you have not voted in the primary election, please take your opportunity to vote. It is an important part of our society that we really encourage that and we hope that you have already voted absentee or drive through, but if you haven't yet, please make sure that you take some time to vote. Masks are strongly encouraged at those polling sites if you go in person and when you go in person. Not required to vote. We want to make sure that that um, is not a requirement, and that is one of the state um, requirements that we have. But we really strongly encourage everybody that does go to vote that they wear a cloth face covering while they are inside. Poll workers will be wearing a mask. So take time to vote. Make sure you keep distance when you go. You um, wear your cloth face covering and you exercise that right and responsibility that we have um, in this country. So Luke Feedy is here, our behavioral health administrator for the county, um, and he's going to share a little update on mental health and then I'll be back to answer questions. Thank you, Liska. Good Monday afternoon. So with the school year rapidly approaching and summer coming to an end, many of us 
parents, educators, and sometimes both are left with hard decisions about what to do with the upcoming school year. Many of us have found ourselves weighing the importance of our child's education with the importance of our family's health, or even the importance of our job duties with the importance of our own health. Many people have come together and try to make decisions that mitigate risk and keep our children safe as well as our families. One thing is for certain, this school year, much like the end of the last school year, will be different. There will be different expectations put on our children in school as well as different expectations put on us as adults. We all have a perception of what we think school should be. Many of us went through plenty of it ourselves and have a hard time reimagining school looking any different than it did for us. Change is difficult. Even a slight change in our routine can have an impact on how we feel and how we behave. This school year will bring about changes in transportation, changes in how students interact, changes in what students wear, and for some, changes in how the school week is structured. Knowing that change can be difficult for us as adults, we need not assume that our children are impervious or immune to the changes that they may be experiencing. It is crucial that we and our children navigate this school year, that as we and our children navigate this school year, we continue to check in and create spaces for discussion around how our children are feeling and how they're thinking. Open up that dialogue, whether it be ver uh, verbal, through email, through text, offers our children an opportunity to share how they are feeling and really lets them know that we're listening. We won't often hear our children say, I'm struggling with anxiety or I'm feeling depressed, but we can look for some of those other symptoms. If they withdraw from what they're doing, from activities, if they show a lack of interest or enjoyment in something they enjoyed in the past, it's important to tell them what we're seeing and allow them to talk about what they're experiencing. It's also crucial to take time to check in on ourselves. We will be faced with the same challenges that some of our children are faced with in our workplaces or our local establishments. Things will look different. We are being called on to do things differently. While that may seem like an easy, easy task, it's not often without its challenges. How many of us have gotten to the parking lot of a store only to find that we don't have masks for the whole family? Or have entered an establishment only to find that the bathrooms are closed? Both of these I'm speaking from personal experience. Uh, while they may seem very small, they all contribute to how we think, how we feel, and how we behave. It's important that we take care of ourselves and recognize that these changes have an impact on us. We've all heard the old saying that in an airplane, um, when the masks fall down, we need to put our own on first. Because if we don't stay uh, healthy, we can't help anybody else. So continue to connect with others. Talk about how you're feeling. Reach out and ask for help if and when you feel you need it. Talk to your children. Let them know that as adults, we are a safe place for them to talk about what they're thinking and what they're feeling. Change is inevitable, and I'm going to leave you with this quote from Prince Philip of England. Change does not threaten tradition. It strengthens it. Change is a challenge and an opportunity not a threat. We as Eau Claire County will embrace these challenges and grow stronger together. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. A good um, chance to really think about how we can turn challenges and into opportunities. So a couple of closing thoughts. Um, please stay tuned to our website. We have updated information there, uh, data, and all of the resources that you may need as you try and navigate um, and continue to have questions and get questions answered. Again, that website, covid 19 Claire.org. You can also continue to use our call center number if there are questions that are not answered on that site. That call center number is 715 831-7425. We'll be back on Wednesday uh, via Facebook streaming, our live streaming, um, with our most recent data and to provide um, answers to questions that the media may bring to that event. So please join us there to get additional updates. And any questions today? Yes. Lisa, you talk about um, difficulties with 
contact tracing as the numbers have gotten bigger? So where, where are you guys at with that? What does that look like? Sure. The question is related to contact tracing and difficulties that we have with the increased numbers. We have been fortunate in Eau Claire County to add capacity related to disease investigation. The core work that we do in public health is really uh, spending time with the individual that is the infected person, the person with COVID-19 in this case, and talking to them about their contacts so that we again can keep the case isolated and home, not getting other people sick, and the contacts stay home so that we make sure that the disease is spread in the most minimal way possible. As our case numbers go up with the numbers that we've been seeing recently, that certainly stresses the public health system. And our metrics online show that. We are not getting as quickly to the investigations as we would like to, but we are staying fairly steady at this point. Our biggest challenge with our disease investigations and our case fo contact follow-up is really people answering the phone and working with us to understand that they play a role if they are the case or a contact to the case in keeping disease um, not spreading rapidly in this community. And we need to count on each other to do that. Answering the phone, talking about who your close contacts were, making sure that those close contacts um, are reached um, so that we can keep them home so they don't further spread disease if in fact they get the disease is really a critical part of our strategy in keeping things open and keeping our economy going. So my ask and really the challenge that we all need to work on together is to understand our role in that, to really encourage one another to answer the phone, to stay home when we are a case, and make sure that we are identifying all the contacts to that case to keep the numbers as small as possible. The additional thing we can do is to keep our contacts as few as possible. The more people we interact with, the more likely the spread of disease will be rapid if, they, if we happen to be a case. If I go to a party with 100 people and interact with all those 100 people in a close way, I now have 100 contacts versus staying with my very close household. We all have a responsibility there. Yeah, the question is, are we seeing a growing number of contacts? We are seeing many of our cases with a large number of contacts. Um, other cases are fewer, um, especially those people that were contacts and they become a case when they have stayed home. Their numbers um, of contacts are smaller. We are challenged when people don't share their full list of contacts with us, so really counting the number of contacts has become somewhat challenging. Right now our average is a little over four close contacts per person, but again, that number I think has to be interpreted as a very large range of, of contacts that we see. Sure. The question is related to um, having a high number of our cases that are in that 20 to 29 year old population. Others have other strategies across the U.S. have been related to looking at bar exposure and potential impact of that environment on case numbers. In Eau Claire County, our order continues to be really about physical distance, um, maintaining a distance and um, an environment where people are not quickly spreading disease. About 42% of our cases are in that 20 to 29 year old age group. It really is critically important that that age understands that it's not just about them getting sick, it's about all of the people that they come in contact with. As I tell my young adult children that I had the pleasure of interacting with this weekend, all four of them are in that age group and they really not only interact with each other, their friends of that age, but they also interact with all kinds of other people in employment situations, in internships if they're in school, um, with grandparents, with those family members, and that's really who they need to care about. 
We are not currently looking at any additional strategies specifically related to a specific type of business. Um, we are really focusing on the distance as a primary um, behavior um, change and at the number of people inside any facility. So 50% capacity and maintenance of six foot distance are primarily what we're looking at for um, those facilities that people are in. Yes. So the question is related to what are we doing right now to stay in touch with um, residents that may not speak English, Hmong in particular, and the question that was asked. Um, we do have a specific group that is working very carefully with um, a variety of population groups in this community that have barriers to access to services and information. That certainly includes language barriers, both our Latino, Latina population as well as our Hmong population. We are working on translating um, materials in various languages and we have close connections with groups like the Hmong Mutual Assistance Association, the school district contacts that are um, working with uh, students and families that are um, not primarily English speaking. Um, and we are leaning in hard to that. We need to do more work and we um, know we need to make more connections there and we continue to work on finding ways to do that. Sure. Question related to what has happened with wearing of masks and uh, potential citations or potential um, enforcement of that. In Eau Claire County, it's not, I do not have any awareness of any specific enforcement action taken to date. Um, our role and goal is really primarily around education. We are assuming when people don't wear masks or that they can't wear a mask, that everybody else understands that this is critically important to support one another in wearing them. Um, statewide, that is the goal. Certainly enforcement action is possible and as we indicated on our shared press announcement last week, um, we're prepared to work together if we need to do that, but we really are seeing this as an opportunity for individuals to take the right step forward to protect one another. Results related to the mask mandate? I'm sorry, just to clarify. Sure. So the question is related to when could we potentially see an impact of something like a mandate on our numbers? Um, so very difficult to um, you know, put together cause and effect in this situation, especially in real time. We know that the research that has been done on uh, masking, on face mask use by the general public has shown very clear connection between lower increases in cases in states where there have been mandates compared to states where there have not. Um, that research b bore out over the spring and early summer and it was part of the reason I'm sure that Wisconsin decided to move forward. When we see it as a clearly effective strategy, it makes sense to employ that as well. Um, we are hoping with all of this to see a slower increase in disease numbers and that's what we're watching in Eau Claire County that's been part of our strategy with the order as well as encouraging uh, masks in this community. Um, and I expect it to make a difference. All right, thank you very much everybody. We will be back on Wednesday with our Facebook Live and um, we appreciate people joining us to get good information, to share that with others, and to visit our website so that they have current and up-to-date information on what's happening with COVID-19 in this community. Thank you.